One week to the Angkor Wat Cambodia Half Marathon. This is week three of a four week metabolic training plan designed to help me run faster. The training plan was created off the back of some metabolic testing I did at Coached in Singapore. Metabolic testing told me I needed to kickstart my fat metabolism in order to increase my speed and to run faster for a longer period of time. The goal is to become more efficient at fat burning by adopting a lower carb diet and increasing my aerobic training. Keeping my heart rate below 148 beats per minute, that's the crossover point where my body was burning more carbohydrates than fats for fuel. I'll link below to the metabolic testing and the full training plan. So here's how week three went. Day one, Monday the 20th of November. Got up early to do my hill sprints. These were still a struggle. I need to practice these more. After hill sprints, I went straight into a tough leg strength training with Doris. The rest of the day, eating was on track and I just got my head down with all my work. Day two, Tuesday the 21st of November. Up at 5 a.m. for strength training, upper body. So I just got in from strength training boot camp. I'll be honest, I'm starting to feel a little bit exhausted now. Not sure if all the training is compounding and I need a bit of a rest um, or if something else is going on. We'll kind of crack on, see how I get on. I think next week I do need to taper off a little bit, reduce some of the long runs, I think, particularly as I get closer to race day. I don't know, the mental part of me just wants to keep going, but my body is getting really tired. My appetite was being a bit strange today and I didn't know what I wanted to eat. Normally, I would just kind of reach for my favorite foods, but in this case, I just had some peanut butter on toast and chicken meatballs for breakfast. I did Pilates with Emily at Physio Down Under this morning. I really like her classes. I just wish they'd been focused more on the core. There was a little bit of everything today. I had a great salad for lunch and a healthy dinner. Day three, Wednesday the 22nd of November. So I have um, literally just woken up. It's 20 past six. My alarm was set for 5 a.m. but I didn't make it out for my run yet. My body's starting to feel really tired. We had a loss in the family uh, at the weekend, a really close family member. I'm not kind of sure if it's everything from that is sinking in or if it's just feeling really drained. If the restricting my eating and the training is all kind of taking its toll now and I'm feeling really tired. I also kind of have a bad night with my daughter. She's only two, so she kind of still wants us to sleep with her sometimes. So I was up and down a few times in the night with her. I am sat just journaling and then we'll get kids ready for school and then maybe kind of try and do my run then. One of the big reasons why I normally kind of run at half five in the morning is because it's 30 odd degrees already, that's Celsius. Um, so it's very, very hot. So the earlier you can do it, the, the cooler it will be. Anyway, just kind of checking in. It's been great so far, but this week I'm starting to feel tired. I think uh, next week it's really making me rethink the plan for next week and making me think I really need to taper off a little bit. Anyway. We'll see. I'm going to get out for a run, even if I don't quite do the distance today. See how I feel. I decided to run, just try my best, not put too much pressure on myself. Okay, so halfway through my run, uh, 10k in, I've just stopped by the river because my phone has switched itself off, which is really annoying. Um, Realised all the little videos that I'd shot uh, in the first part of my run didn't take, so must have had something to do with the system update last night um, everything just didn't feel like it was working all my tech anyway just restarted my phone hopefully it'll be all good uh, 10k in 10k to go and um, yeah doing a different route I've come from Sentosa into the city so hopefully I'll get some amazing shots of all the buildings and everything So just finished 20k run, decided to run from Sentosa Island all the way into the city. So you can see some of the city behind me and Marina Bay Sands, 180, more of the city up there. 
than the bar rats and me. <laughs> uh, loads of florists here this morning as well. Uh, just got myself a freshly squeezed orange juice. I always, always crave these after a big long run or during the run. It's the thing that I dream of. Uh, now I've got it, I'm a bit like, oh, it's a bit sweet. It's the first thing I've not really eaten today, so it's going to completely spike my glucose, which is probably not the best thing. Run felt okay, bit slow, I'm trying to keep the heart rate down. Frustrating, just hope that it all works out. Two weeks to go until the marathon, or a week and a half. A week and a half to go until the half marathon in Cambodia. Hoping all this slow training pays off and I'll be able to run faster. We'll see. Yes. Sometimes it's those days when you really don't feel like it that you have the best runs. Had an amazing BLT bagel for breakfast when I got home and then had a Mexican burrito bowl for lunch. Probably shouldn't have been eating the rice with the carb cycling, but I was bloody hungry after I run in the morning. <laughs> Thursday the 23rd of November. So up at 5 a.m. for lower body strength training in the pouring rain, muddy field. There was no getting out of it this morning and it was actually really fun. <laughs> Missed yoga today to focus on work. Ate loads of random leftovers, starting to get really bored of the restriction. Friday the 24th of November. Late to start this morning, went for a nice long walk and had a protein shake for breakfast. Had an upper body PT session late morning, which was great because it meant I could have my carbs for lunch. I went for pasta again, obviously, which was great. Spent the afternoon in the spa, finally getting that much needed self-care. The massage was amazing and then I went and did the hot and cold pools. I absolutely hate being cold. I cannot bear it. And I honestly think this is probably the first time that I've even attempted a cold plunge. I couldn't even get it up to my shoulders. It was absolutely horrible. Day six, Saturday the 25th of November. 5 a.m. ready for another run. Let's go. Kept the pace nice and easy and steady. I didn't check my heart rate monitor every few minutes, which is what I've been doing with previous runs. This resulted in my heart rate being a little higher than previous runs, but still below the 148 beats per minute. Had some Staffordshire oat cakes with cheese and sausage for my breakfast. These are what I bought back from the UK with me and they just taste like home. We hosted a Christmas dinner party with friends and my amazing husband cooked the most incredible meal. We had tuna tartare and avocado to start with. We had three different steaks with zucchini, broccoli, Brussels sprouts and mac and cheese. It was amazing. Then I made chocolate lava cakes with salted caramel and vanilla ice cream. I ate the carbs, the bread, the mac and cheese. I was really hungry after my run this morning. I also drank some non-alcoholic wine, which is generally really low in carbs. I did, however, resist dessert. This was a massive win for me. I was so close to giving up, but I stayed strong. Day seven, Sunday the 26th of November. The sugar cravings were real today. It took a fuckload of willpower not to give in. We had a Christmas family fun day at home, including making gingerbread houses with the kids. I think the sugar cravings hit when I'm really tired. It's three days before my period. And also maybe when I'm a little bit bored or it's out of habit. And that's something that I really need to work on. So coming into the results, training. Did all my runs and strength training this week. Missed a couple of the active recoveries, but I think that's okay. Benchmarking the runs against a 20 kilometer run I did in October. A slightly better week this week, despite my tiredness. The speed is increasing, even if the heart rate is up slightly. 141 on Wednesday and 144 on Saturday. Still managing to keep my heart rate below that 148 crossover point. Starting to worry that I'm not gonna be able to run fast on race day. That maybe I'm getting a bit used to this slow shuffle. I just need to have faith, trust the process, and hope it pays off on race day. Nutrition. The carbs are starting to sneak in a little bit more this week, likely due to tiredness, self-control wavering, and just getting a bit bored of my food generally. My biggest win was not eating sugar again this week. This is huge for me. Towards the end of the week, my cravings were unbearable, and I think this is probably because my period's coming. My calories did increase overall this week, which is great, but they're still really inconsistent on a day-to-day -day basis. This must be really affecting my performance. I need to try and eat more next week. Sleep and stress. I mostly had a good week this week, seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Another big win this week was practicing some self-care, getting to the spa, having a massage, and getting some time to relax. So I'm more tired than frustrated at the end of this week. I'm starting to get excited about the race, and maybe even more excited about eating chocolate afterwards. 
One week to go until race day. My biggest challenge now is gonna be tapering off. I actually really struggle with taking it easy. I also really need to remain consistent with the diet. Please subscribe if you wanna follow this journey to see if I really can run faster in four weeks. If you want more information about the metabolic testing, you can watch that here and I'll link down below to Coached. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.